Welcome back, my friends. This video is about status. If you don't know who I am, my name is Shiva, 28-year-old meditation master. No plans, no thoughts about this video, but I need to make a video about status. Why? Because I like it. I like making videos, and I don't like making plans. Okay. Status, let's talk about status or status. What do I define as status? As a man, to me, status is your ability to be grounded in life, your ability to be calm in all situations, your ability to perceive reality for what it truly is, your ability to be beyond your intellect, and your ability to be present in every situation. That's what I see as status. That's the core of status. Why did I share these examples? Because at various times on planet Earth, I've encountered situations where I had to talk to people of the opposite gender, various types of people, and for with various intentions, I had to talk to them. And I noticed how women react to me and how women respond to me when I'm like this. Meaning what? Meaning the benefits that I've gained through meditation the response is very favorable, very positive. So that's why I begin this video talking about status in this way. This to me is what status or status is. is. But most people will not see status as like, as, as what I just described. Most people will see status as something that you gain through getting a nice car or a nice fancy watch or I don't know, a house or something else or something else or something else. This to me is, so what? So what? Who are you going to impress with those things? If you're gonna sh wave your watch around and some girl's going to like you or some person is going to be impressed, well, let's just be honest here. I'm talking mainly uh, to do with the reproductive cycle. Why? Because that's, that's uh, very important. If you're a man watching me, that's very, very important to you. You can't deny this. This is, a, this is a fundamental drive in the human system, is to survive and to reproduce. And I am now pursuing the lifestyle choices. I'm doing the lifestyle choices in order to reproduce or to pass on my genetics. At least that's what it feels like or it seems like, or, uh, what it feels like I'm doing. So this is why I'm talking to you in this context. And if you think that's not spiritual, too bad. You don't know what spirituality is. So waving your watch around, sure, maybe some woman out there is going to find you attractive, but she doesn't really find you attractive. She finds your lavish lifestyle and your money attractive, which that has its own pros and cons. The pros are, well, maybe a beautiful girl is going to like you. The cons are, well, she doesn't really like you. She likes your money. So I don't know what I'm talking about in this video at all. But the, an interest towards status and towards me sharing my ideas with status is high. And that's why I'm talking to you in this way. Two days ago, I talked about money. Yesterday, I talked about sex. And this video, I guess, is talking about power because status is power. Now I understand what I need to talk about. Well, my friends, 
Power is essentially the title of this video or the topic of this video, but I'm probably not going to title it power. It's something to do with status, spiritual status. Status to me and power to me are synonymous, meaning they're similar things or they're the same thing. So how much power you have determines how much status you have. And again, when I talk about status, I'm primarily talking to the men and what it means to be a man. So you can be powerful in various ways. You can be powerful in many ways. You can be powerful in the way that you operate a power plant and you're powerful. You can be powerful in the way that you're a owner of a, a car dealership and you're powerful. You can be powerful in a way that you're a bouncer to a nightclub and you're powerful in that sector. You can be powerful in the way that you're the president of the United States and you're powerful there. But are you really powerful in all areas of life in these little external situations? No, I would argue no, not you're not. So this is the difference between a person such as myself and an everyday, regular, uninstructed worldling. If they're seeking things externally, thinking that they're gonna get something internally, no. I have denied that, I reject that, I reject seeking the external thing. Not that I reject or deny it, it's just, it's not worthwhile chasing that. I would much rather pursue the internal thing, as I am. The internal qualities, the internal state of mind, the internal benefits. And my external reality and situations always kind of fix themselves or uh, rewire themselves. So why am I talking about status? Well, my friends, I have no money. I have no power externally. I'm not in any positions of power or authority. I have no, I don't know, friends with very capable or powerful friends or whatever this, the, uh, the common symbols or sim uh, symptoms of status is but I would consider myself statusful. Why? Because I have the inner energy to display this. And I'm displaying this to you now. Here, look at me. Good. So, status, I have no idea didn't make notes, don't want to make notes, just want to share my ideas with you. Status. If you're a man out there, you're looking for status, you're seeking status, whether you like it or not, it's a very important trait, very important quality. And don't deny this for yourself. Meaning to say what? Meaning that you shouldn't go to a job or you shouldn't go to some career, you shouldn't pursue the physical things. No, you should. Good go. If you want to do that, fantastic. Keep, uh, do that. But understand this, my friends, that there are many ways to become powerful. And I would like to think I've been wrong before, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would like, to, but I don't think so. I don't think that I'm wrong. I don't, I would like to think that there is an ultimate sense of power or an ultimate sense of status. I'll just say it like this that you as a man can reach and it is not defined by little external things or uh, pieces of paper that are written written written, written down or uh, your relationships with others or whatever other dependent factors that there are do you know who i think is powerful or has high status the buddha i've never seen the buddha never talked to the buddha never touched the buddha never had any contact with that man whatsoever except I read about him 2,600 years ago this man was alive that man had status <laughs> that man was powerful he wore raggedy robes he ate one meal a day and no food after uh, midday he didn't touch women he didn't touch money he slept in just you know basically on the floor he begged for his food what else? He didn't change his clothes, only wore one ro set of robes. And a few other ascetic practices that he lived in the forest, 
slept three, four hours a night, two, two and a half hours a night the Buddha slept. And just like this, a raggedy robe-wearing man was in contact with virtually all of the kings in that kingdom. And he taught those kings. And those kings was, were willing to do anything for that man. Why? Because that's life. You as a man are here to work on your own internal life. You're a life. That's the fi first and foremost thing. That's the primary thing. So work on your life. Expand your life. Amplify your life in whatever way that you can. I would like to share my plan here with you. I don't share my plans. I don't have plans. Uh, not that I don't have plans. I'll, I'll share a desire with you. Maybe this desire is going to be fulfilled. Maybe this desire is going to be destroyed. Something better is going to present itself or an obstacle that I can't cross is going to be there or something else is going to happen. There's so many things that can happen. And um, it's foolish to, you know, I've said absolute things on this YouTube channel and I regret that. I regrettably am saying that I do regret that. Why? It was just not skillful. I didn't think uh, to the long term. I said something thinking... Uh, with my intention to um, with something totally different for the reason why I'm saying it so I thought I was saying it for one way but it turns out something else happened but it doesn't matter, whatever I'm going to be much more precise with my speech from now on so I have a desire to go to Kailash ultimately that's where my life is leading me Kailash and I will and I shall that's my plan, that's my desire and in this lifetime, I will see that mountain. I will see Kailash. Hopefully, I will see Kailash this summer. So if you're out there and if you're interested into going in with me to see this mountain, the opportunity is, is here for you. We would meet somewhere in Kathmandu in Nepal and then we would go visit the sacred place. And I want to stay there for quite some time, a few weeks. So this is going to happen in this lifetime, or I'm going to die. That's the only two um, options that I kind of feel that, that are available to me today. So I plan on going there, and my friends, why am I sharing this with you, why am I saying this to you now, is because this is the most powerful place on earth. If you're a man seeking power, maybe you're not seeking power, I'm seeking power because I know what I want and I know what dimensions I've touched and this is just my desire. Maybe you as a man, you're seeking something else, but let me think if this is wrong for me to say what I'm going to say now, next. Well, I'll just say it. Every man, I think, I think, I may be wrong. Maybe Carlos and I are going to have a, a debate or discussion and he'll uh, say something about this and I'll change my mind like I've done in the past. But I think every man is seeking power. Power is the ultimate thing to be powerful as a man. Biologically, that's an instinct. It's like when a boy is born and he's a normal, natural boy, he naturally picks up doesn't pick up a flower well he can pick up a flower it's okay no problem but usually boys pick up sticks and they pretend that they're rifles and pretend that they're swords why well for the same reason i just said power so power again manifests in various ways and i'm interested in power am i looking for power over someone am i going to be powerful and control people no i don't care about you i'm interested to seek power just for my own self for my own life I want to be plugged into a nuclear power plant and just consume all that energy and more. There's not enough there. Not physically, obviously. Metaphorically. So anyways, to cut a uh, long story short, I'm going to go to Kailash. I want to go to Kailash. I'm planning to go to Kailash. And I'm going to take everything from there as much as I can. Implement it within myself. Take it into myself. Use it. Harm... Uh, Harness it, absorb it, cultivate it, eat and consume all the power that is in there. And that's ultimate power. That's ultimate status. 
So I'm not seeking to get some little job or to puff up my muscles. I was talking to Carlos and he's very adamant that I puff up my muscles. And uh, you know, some young people are, sh are telling me that I, I, I need to puff up my muscles. And I'm, I'm s like, when people are telling me things, I'm sort of somewhat swayed by them because people have influence and their communication affects me. And then today as I was laying in bed, I realized this is just wrong for me. It's not wrong. The thing is wrong. But it's, it would be the wrong thing for me to go and puff up my muscles. Why? Because my energy is not going there. It's quite painful and unneeded. It's a wrong use of my resources. At least right now. That's how I feel. Maybe I'll change my mind in, in a more appropriate atmosphere. But right now I don't see a need for that. Why? I, I get it why you're exercising. Anyways, I'm not going to go into this point. It is, it's irrelevant. So uh, you can do all these physical things and fantastic. I'm not willing to do that. So I'm yet to find comfortable clothes that I can just wear as my uniform and not wear any other clothing. You know, I'm wearing this for my YouTube videos just to show and demonstrate that the life that I've chosen, that's it. I'm a renunciant. Maybe not uh, physically, I may be indulging in some nice fruits or whatever else I like to eat in this world and enjoy. But internally, this is how I am. I've given up virtually everything and anything. And I'm willing to give up anything. Anything. And I will. I will give up everything. <laughs> Just so that I can close my eyes and poof, leave. Without any hesitation whatsoever. Where my body is going to be laying down or who I'm going to leave behind or what is to come afterwards. No. Simply gone. So... This is what I'm after. I'm after internal power. I want to be powerful. Why? Because it makes my ego feel very good. Very good. I relish in that sensation. I relish in that feeling. I want to cultivate as much power as I possibly can. Why? Because I, got, because I like it. Because I like it. And I will. And... Yes. So ultimately I'm seeking internal power not external power, not wanting to get a job, this is the point that I'm trying to make, not wanting to get a job, to climb a little ladder and be, hey, I have a job. Or going and working out and strengthening my body. What am I strengthening my body for? Tell me, why? Also, girls can like me. I don't care if girls like me. Oh, so that you become stronger and fight off attack. Ah, yeah, okay, if an attacker comes, let's go, all right? It's not some big thing to fight off some man that wants to hurt you or harm you. Yeah, sure. He's skilled and he's a fighter. All right. Looks like it's time to either get a severe beating or die. Oops. But generally, that's not the case. We have the police to deal with these things. Yet still, um, if you're calm, you remain calm and centered, and you're aware of what you're doing and you're aware of what's happening, you can just do the necessary thing. And... A man's body, a male's body, it comes with severe disadvantages in some points, in some parts. You can imagine what that is. So uh, maybe some of you are going to think this is delusional. I'm very delusional. I'm the most delusional man on planet Earth. Okay, thank you very much. But uh, I don't think so. And if you think I'm delusional, please make a video <laughs> exposing me and uh, telling me what you think about me. But. Don't comment. I don't care about your little comments. Still comment for the YouTube algorithm. But uh, I'd rather see a video with your face. All right, let's see. So I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to puff up my muscles. Why? I was doing that as a young adult. And then I realized oh, I'm just doing this for girls. Doing this for just to feel a little bit uh, bulkier and bigger. It's a wrong use of my energy. I will strengthen my body and do whatever is needed with my body in better ways than simply guzzling iron back and forth, damaging my joints. No thank you. So I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to go and chase girls, meet girls. Why? For what? 
For what? <laughs> if you can tell me for what, then I will. All right? I live in a first world country. Right now I'm staying in the middle of the city, in the center. I literally can walk maybe two minutes or a minute and a half and I can go to a bar or a nightclub or there's various places like this. Beautiful women, half dressed women. It's the uh, climate is relatively warm. I can meet all sorts of women. Am I going to do that? Am I willing to do that? Absolutely not. Why? Who is there for me? Oh, hey, my name is Jane. I work at this or that. Oh, look, I have a beautiful body. We can go and uh, spend some time in, in private together and uh, blend our, mix our energies together and uh, bind ourselves for one night. Hey, are you interested in that? Yeah, no. No, I'm not. Okay? I don't see a purpose in that. So I'm not willing to go and chase girls or go meet the girls or whatever you think that I'm going to do. No, thank you. Okay? No, thank you. <laughs> it's a big trap. I'm not willing to, what, pretty much pursue anything outside whatever people would deem necessary and important, whatever. No, that's not important to me. I will own businesses in the future. I will have loads of money. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I'm 28 years of age. I know how my energy is flowing. If I don't die tomorrow or prematurely, this will happen for me. It's inevitable. I know why, because I'm a genius. And I will invent things, and I will produce things, and I will offer services to others, and I will acquire multiples of millions of dollars. It's just, when? When is that going to happen? Well, I have some plans. <laughs> I am leave revealing my plans to you, okay? I say I don't have plans, and I truly don't in the sense that you do. But I see how my energy is going. I see the cycles of time that are passing. And um, I have some goals or milestones. Or I know I'm looking at the direction that I want to reach. All right? Is that a plan for you? Good. So I'm 28 years of age. How my life is right now, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. And 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So in four years approximately is the next big milestone, 32 years of age. Something should happen by then. Should what? I don't know. Either I'll acquire some land or I'll own some big bill of business or my YouTube channel is going to grow or I'll meet some people and network with them or something in the physical world. Why? Because I want to keep my body very comfortable and very safe and very live well. Okay, and I will live well. That's not an issue for me. So 32 is the next big milestone. Afterwards, I'm not planning that far ahead, but uh, I'm preparing myself for the next four years until 32. So this is the preparation time. And what am I doing to prepare? Nothing, nothing needs to be done. <laughs> uh, when I say nothing, my friends, let me give you the best analogy that I can give you to my life and what's happening. It's like a fallen, fallen off some building or platform. And I'm in the fall, I'm in the midst of the fall. And because there's gravity, every second that goes by, I'm closer to the ground. Ooh, about to make impact. So I don't have to do much for my life to deepen and for my life to progress because I've already set the causes in motion. It's inevitable, this, these, this thing will happen, these things will happen. Why? Because I know how cause and effect works. And I'm just on for the ride. And every day I'm walking to the bathroom or I'm sitting in bed or I'm eating some food and I'm watching some videos and profound things are happening within my mind. And I'm going deeper and deeper into this consciousness which is phenomenal, which is fantastic. Maybe that's, what, that's happening to everyone. I hope it is. I'm sure it is in some sense. So nothing needs to be done. You know, people are telling me, oh, you need to do things. Some certain people are telling me, you need to do things, you need to do that. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to do anything. I've actually purposely made my life in a way that I don't need to do anything. I don't want to do anything. Do, doing what? What is there to do? I do the need, needed things. I go take a shower, I go brush my teeth. I go eat food. I go, I don't know, do laundry occasionally. I go 
and then other otherwise I just be. Oh, it's boring. Oh, you're not having fun. Oh, yeah, some some might think that. It's boring. It's not boring. Everything is boring. Everything is literally the same for me. You know, going to some nightclub or <laughs> going having some stimulating experience going skydiving that doesn't interest me at all why because at the end of the day whatever i'm doing i'm still inside of myself it's still an internal experience so i could be here i could be halfway across the world i could be in bali i could be in the ocean i could be in nepal i could be in india i could be in canada i could be anywhere i could be in a girl's bed but still ultimately it's this one experiencing it i'm still inside of this physical casing so obviously the work is inside. It's not out here, you going and trying to getting lost, getting lost. You're getting lost. I'm not interested in getting lost. I'm not here to get lost. I'm here to find, find the way. You know, Sadhguru says that there is a Kailash on earth. There is. It's the most wonderful, most fascinating place on earth. And you will see the way it changes me after I go see this place. I will give everything of myself to that place. I will just shed it all. What I will just destroy myself. And we'll see what the outcomes of that are or is. I'm sure I'll be very, a lot more beneficial to the world and to the planet after I see this place. And why is it called Kailash? Well, the definition, the diction definition doesn't really matter. It uh, matters because it's called Kailash because uh, Shiva was there. And that was his abode. That's He put all of his knowledge into that stone, into that mountain. And it reverberates so powerfully. Even a stone, a simple stone that I acquired is just magical. There's a second Kailash in the south, southern India. And it's called Kailash of the South, very appropriately, in the Velangiri Mountains. Why is it called Kailash of the South? Because Shiva traveled down south in India. And then he went up this mountain and he sat there for some time, for a few months. And this energy, he cultivated this energy into the, into the mountain, into the stone. So that's a remarkable place and I'm yet to see that, that mountain. But the point of this, I'm trying to make is that there is a Kailash that's an original Kailash, the Kailash, and it's not here on planet Earth. The Kailash that we see here is more of like Shiva's visiting home Kailash. It's on planet Earth. It's like his cottage. The original Kailash is somewhere in the universe, somewhere in space. I don't know where, I don't know how or who or what or if or why or whatever. But I know this exists because I see it in Sadhguru. I can sense it and feel it in Sadhguru. And this, so whatever is happening, this is what I'm after, the original Kailash. After I leave, that's where I wanna go, if I can go there. Or right now, whatever my energies are flowing towards, that's what I wanna be in contact with. Kailash, original Kailash. One thing I will leave you with here in this video is that, well, first of all, let's acknowledge uh, my new thumbnails. Dennis is making a few thumbnails and he did a great job. And one of the videos that he made the thumbnails with uh, has something like 500 views now, which let's all take a moment and appreciate him for doing that. Yet uh, he made me realize that I need to do these thumbnails on my own. And I started doing that and I turned my thumbnails blue with the background of Kailash, just a picture of me and some words. And simply my, me doing that changed me in a miraculous and magical way. It made me more closer and more, have a much bigger contact with this mountain, this space of Kailash. So one thing that I wanna leave you here, the last thing that I'm going to leave you here is with, is that Sadhguru's new video came out of him being in Bali. And he talks about 
that his partner doesn't want to see him dead just yet. That's why he's uh, he's keeping him alive, so to speak. That's why Sadhguru is still alive, because this, this being, this powerful being that we call Shiva, wants him to still stay here. And I strongly felt this is not Sadhguru's time. Sadhguru still has so, so much work to do. Uh, a being like that with such capabilities and such power, what he can do for, for planet Earth and for living beings, particularly human beings, is vast. And still, some things need to be done by him and we will all reap the benefits for that. And thank you very much, Sadhguru, if uh, you're ever going to watch this video. Even energetically, I want to say this to him. Thank you. So this is just like me. This is just like myself. Ever since I've touched this energy of Kailash and Shiva, I knew that this is the most powerful thing in the universe, at least so far that I found. I knew that this will give me the answers to what, to everything that I'm searching for, everything. And I don't have to look further, at least not now. So I changed my name, obviously my legal name, Shiva Kailash Shambo, that's my legal name as well as I want to go into this full on, head first. If I'm diving in a pool, I'm diving in head first. And I don't care if it obliterates me, if it uh, lights me on fire, if it destroys me, if it destroys my body, if it destroys my life, which that's already been done, and uh, very graciously, and I'm still, whatever destruction needs to be done by me or through me or into me, destroy it all. Destroy my life. Whatever destruction, other destruction needs to happen, let it all be destroyed. So I'm pursuing this full on. This is not some... I don't know what you think this is. This is not some... imaginary thing that I'm doing. Or something that I'm... Uh, I don't know, whatever. So this has to take hold of the entire world and of the entire planet, this being, this being's energy. If you come in contact with this being or this presence or this energy, even for one moment, even for one second, you touch this. It's like the sweetest food on planet Earth. You're never going to forget it, especially if you've been eating junk or bland food or stale food. If you taste real actual food, that's it. Game over. I'll add one more thing. I had a dream today, this morning. This morning I had a very nice sleep. Slept for many hours. Felt very relaxed and I woke up at 10 or 11 a.m. That's usually how it is for me. I like to st uh, sleep late and wake up early. And I like to do nothing. I'm very lazy. By the way, thank you very much for calling me lazy. That's exactly what I am. I'm extremely lazy. And I will continue to be so. You go out there and dig ditches and do whatever you need to do and want to do and pretend like you want to do those things. I don't want to do those things. I want to do nothing. Or, let me rephrase this, I want to do what I want to do, not depending on anything. If I don't want to earn money, even though it makes me feel uh, homeless or broke or whatever, I'm not going to get food, too bad. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I won't do it. Yes, yeah, so I'm very lazy. So I had a nice dream today. The dream was I was looking at the mirror. There's a mirror here in this little uh, room that I were uh, staying in. And I'm looking in the mirror 
and I'm feeling the akash around me, the space element. And I'm seeing that my body is becoming very akashic-like, very etheric, very loose and transparent like smoke. That's the best way of saying it. It's like becoming like smoke, almost see-through, very loose, relaxed I am with my energy. And as I'm seeing my body become sort of smoke-like, I can see through myself. And as I'm seeing through myself, I'm seeing that inside of me is the energy of Sadhguru. I can literally see him and I'm, my face, my physiology, and my overall energy is morphing into him. It's like if he had a clone or a copy of himself that I would just enter him or enter that and make my being morph into that and um, integrate with that, integrate with him. That's not what's happening. His energy, his presence is literally inside of me, inside of my body. And I'm morphing into him or however much I can release myself and to let it go and how much I can make a room for him or for that presence. That's how much I'm becoming him. And uh, yeah, it was so fascinating to see that and so rewarding that's happening and more beings need to be like this on this planet, like him. Such a phenomenal and wonderful story that he shared with us is that um, I'll talk about this in a future video but very briefly I'm going to discuss this the story that uh, this man plucked his eyes out and gave it to the woman in order for her to see reality for what it is for her for him to awaken her inner eyes he's willing to lose his eyes he did lose his eyes physically he plucked them out and handed her his eyes because she thought, oh, you have such nice eyes, such beautiful eyes. Well, again, Sadhguru said in the 21st century, if you were to do that, you'd be considered a big fool, and you would be a fool. But back then, hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago, when these things were scarce, sparse, not available and not common, meaning awakened beings, and if you're an awakened being and you see some opportunity, some glimmer of light, some hope in someone, what is there to do? If it's so valuable for this to sprout out, you're willing to pluck your eyes out. And that's what Sadhguru has done to himself in some ways. Not with his eyes, of course, but with his brain. So I'm glad he uh, recovered. And that's it, my friends. I should stop talking when I stop talking. If you want to reach out to me and change your life and have a discussion with me, an in-depth discussion about your life, me examining you and your energy and your lifestyle choices and whatever else, I can counsel you basically. I'm not a professional. I don't have any professional degrees. Don't get this misconstrued. I have inner expertise. So I can share with you my inner knowledge and my experience. <laughs> uh, I can help you out in various ways. All right, so if you uh, feel called to do this, do this. If you feel intrigued into this, do it, okay? Just to do it. The price is $120 Canadian. Link will be down below for PayPal. Send me money, we'll talk. Contact me on Facebook afterwards. Uh, add me on Discord, lots of fun there. Yeah, most importantly, talk to me, all right? I will share with you my wisdom and you share with me your money. That's the proper exchange. All right, that's it. Stay blessed. Have a good day. Goodbye.